If I were to play a sound like this, Where do you think that came from? You probably would not think that it came from something like this. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's a conch shell. And you heard some aliasing and stuff because it's stretched out because all the effects and everything on the final sound you can't even really tell. Super slowed down and stretched and probably pitch shifted as well. This is the secret. How am I getting that sound? Little Alter Boy from Sound Toys. I've talked about Sound Toys here and there in some previous episodes and how much I absolutely love them. And Little Alter Boy, as it turns out, is on sale right now until the end of July for $29. Now for me, $29 for a plugin that's useful is pretty much a no-brainer, but I think, um, I can't remember the name of the subscriber. Someone made a comment about Sound Toys being on sale right now. Thank you for doing that very much. You know who you are. Two big thumbs up. And they have a couple of individual plugins that are on sale for $29, and then it scales up a little bit. And I know how it is. Sometimes you can't afford $500 for a whole suite of plugins. If you can, get the entire suite because they are all incredible. But if not, you can go in and choose. I'm going to do a couple of other episodes on some of the other plugins that are available separately that I like to use a lot. Now, the one downside to Little Alter Boy is they actually advertise it as a vocal processor. That's because it's a monophonic, pitch-bending, morphing kind of plugin. That does not mean that it's limited to vocals. I have used it on vocals in the past. Obviously, it sounds fine on conch shell. And I've got a couple different examples that I want to play for you and show you how I used it and how amazing their thought process behind how they process audio is just so great and makes it so musical. So this is what I played here just now. And this is the original. And over here are the plugins that I had on it. And the one thing that you heard that I don't have listed here is the Brocasti Reverb. But what I was going to do is just pull up this guy. Now, the brilliance behind Little Alter Boy is there's three different modes. I'm almost always in transpose mode because these are a lot more... This is like share vocals or T-Pain or something like that. And then this is very robot -y And they're both great. I just don't need that sort of a sound. So I will link... If I want to have a big beefy sound, the pitch and the formant, I will unlink them if I want to tweak the formant, like maybe I'll do that on the next example, and just have a different kind of sound. So you've got independent control of these, or you can link them. Then you've got a drive knob, which just sounds amazing, and then a mix. And it's great because it's not just on and off. You've got a percentage from zero all the way up to 100%. And this mix knob really makes a huge difference. So I'm going to leave this on and just play this lick right here and slowly turn the mix knob and you can hear what it does. So we've got it on negative 12, which is an octave. Obviously you can set it on anything you want. If you want to have it play a chord for you, you could do a perfect fifth or a fourth, a third, really anything. What's great is the drive is what really gives it a little bit of extra oomph and then sometimes maybe you just want to have 100% wet, which would sound like this. But you just want to bring a little bit of that original higher part in and you can just pull it back. And it's nice and subtle because you're blending a percentage of that original, since we're pulled down an octave, higher pitch. And it's almost like having an EQ. It's like you're boosting the top end. This is the most straightforward way that I use it, with a single plug-in and pitch it down that way. I'll play another lick for you.
Now let's pull the drive down. So you really do get that kind of top end, kind of crispy analog drive when you turn the knob up, which usually I've probably got it at 12 o'clock, kind of 50%, because it seems to be the right balance of giving it some extra oomph without sounding like it's got distortion on it. I got one more look here, we might as well listen to it. And without little Alter Boy. It's like someone playing with a balloon. It's like you're at the cafeteria and there's a clown making balloon animals in the background. And again, I mentioned that it does sound a little bit uh, kind of phasey and funky because I stretched it out super, super long in Cubase. I just, it's probably three times longer than it should be and probably pitch shifted as well. But the bottom line is when you have all the effects turned on, you're not gonna notice that. you just get this massive wash of sound. Now, really quickly, this is not about these other plugins, but I'm sure if I were watching this, I'd wanna know what else is on there. So I've got an EQ, scooping out a little mids, taking out a little top end. Looks like that's about it. Another great Sound Toys plugin giving it some darkness that's almost at 100% wet going through this, a little bit of crunch and crush and darkness all together. And then as if that wasn't enough distortion, I have this on there as well, which is just some sort of a tweak multiband distortion. Pretty much Fab Filter and Sound Toys are my two favorites. So what I can do is I'll play this lick, the second one, with and without all the plugins. So here it is without. And here it is with. And now I'll take off the distortion in the EQ and we'll just listen to just Little Alter Boy. You can tell it's doing so much to the sound and it's really transforming it. And for the keen eared among you, um, this particular conch uh, shell performance was taken from Far Cry Primal. And this was one of those examples of, I had my friend Alan over here, who's a trombone player. I ordered two different conch shells and I couldn't make any sound out of them. He walked over, picked one up and started playing like C major scale runs up and down because he's a brass player, that's what he does. So we just had a little too much to drink and had a little too much fun and recorded about an hour's worth of just crazy things being played. And then I, he came back about halfway through the game once I knew how I was using the sounds and we recorded some more. I've got some other examples that I can show. We can take a flute and this is me performing flute. And with the effects plus the Rikasti. Now this is where the magic of Little Alter Boy really comes in, as far as I'm concerned. Using more than one and stacking them together. Because if one does an octave, then the second one's gonna do an octave below that. And the difference you're hearing in the pitch between the dry version and the affected version is the first little altar boy is at 100% wet, so we're automatically dropping the entire thing an octave. The second one is at 50%, so half of that signal is also getting dropped another octave below that. Make sure that they're, here's one octave down. Original pitch. One octave down. 
100% wet, and here's the second octave at 50%. Now really, to my ears, that sounds about like a 50-50 balance between the low and the high, which is exactly what we have on the mix knob right here. I wanted it to sound like kind of a two-octave thing. Now what's funny is when you listen to it, especially in context with all the other effects, it doesn't sound like, you know, oh, why wow, I hear it's an octave and there's something an octave below that. Since they're octaves and they're kind of reinforcing the same fundamental, it just sounds like a big instrument. This is one of the key things that I discovered, especially working on Far Cry Primal. If I can add lower octaves and lower kind of subharmonics, if you will, to the sound without trying to pitch the whole thing down an octave, you know, in the computer, it made it sound a lot bigger and it gave it a lot more kind of beefy presence. But what was great is I always would be able to like, watch this, pull back in the original. So maybe that's like a, maybe a 50-50 blend between all three. Now of course, we're listening to it super dry. It would never be done this way and left out in the wilderness of the game playing completely dry. I've got a couple of other things, some more distortion, of course, and a tape echo, and it gives it a lot more character. And then there would be reverb on top of that. But for the sake of demonstration purposes, I like being able to just listen to it this way. And then if you wanted it to be two octaves down only. That's pretty good pitch shifting considering we're dropping that flute two entire octaves. Another great thing that I love to do is to have the formant and pitch not linked. So if we're at 100% wet, And formant, for anyone that doesn't know, is basically like a vowel kind of idea, like a, an ow, wow. That's sort of changing the formant of the sound. So if you listen to that again, if I start at zero. So this is, there's some really neat things you can do with this. Like you could have both of them running and change the formant in real time if you wanted to. Let's make this 100% and this will make this 50%. It's all about movement. And I did this a lot, especially with flutes. I would automate the format and have it changed so that it kind of sounded like something other than just the standard flute playing. What else have we got here? The conch shell, oh yeah. All right, let's look at these shakers. This is a great way to add some extra low end. Now to be fair, I'm, I'm going down in octaves every time and I'm using higher sounds that I wanna make sound bigger. You can do the exact same thing if you have a big sound and you wanna add some top end, transpose it up an octave. Make chords, do something interesting. You're, you're really, the sky's the limit. This plugin is super flexible and really transparent. So this is a case of percussion. These are just some coconut shakers that I recorded live. Super dry. And now I can add an octave. This is down zero on the drive, zero on the mix. So I'm just gonna loop this.
Now granted, these are fairly large shakers and they are a little beefy to start out with, but how cool is that? Especially with the drive. I really like it. Well, apparently with this patch, I really like it with two of them <laughs> because why not? I'm gonna turn the drive up on both of them. Let's put this one at 50%, which means we're here. So I'm not losing too much of my top end. Now this is going to be a lot more subtle because we're two octaves below and this is percussion and it's not like it's a pitched kind of tonal thing. I'd go at least 50% because it gets a little squishy. I mean, after all, we are dropping what's equivalently a shaker that has no pitch by two octaves. That sounds pretty amazing to me. Especially considering that was our original source. And you can do formant shifting with percussion as well. I never really have. Let's see what it sounds like. See, it's getting a little grainy when we're at 100% because you're only hearing the formant shifted completely messed up down one octave and weirdly changed sound. If you have it at 50%, I really like some of those textures and timbres that were. That's another great way to use a little Alter Boy. And I've got one more version here. This is a bowed symbol. And I use pretty much any time I'm doing bowed sounds, I'm using little altar boy on them. Now the idea is exactly the same. It's gonna pitch it down an octave and then an octave again. Looks like it's a little more than 50% here, a little less than 50% there. Take off the reverb. Let's listen to it dry. Now this particular symbol is the Crash of Doom, which is made by Zildjian, and it's this really super funky symbol that's got all these kind of jangly edges. It's warped and was kind of hammered wrong, and what I love about it is every time you bow it, it's pretty much impossible to get the same sound each time you bow it because the edges are warped. It looks like a badly taken care of record, and because it's so beat up, from the store and hammered wrong and warped that the overtones are actually dampened a lot. So you're not getting that super bright kind of cutting in a bad way sound sometimes when you bow a cymbal and there's just this really strong fundamental that comes in like at 5k and you're going, oh my gosh, and you can't EQ it because once you take it out, there's like nothing else there. That's the cymbal bowed by itself without any effects on it. Let's start more like 71. So anything from there, we're just going to be adding some extra low end. Come on, how cool is that? It's like physically impossible to bow something and get a sound that low. Let's drop in another octave. All right, now we're getting into super cool, like crazy, not even have a reverb on it yet category.
Now, as with most things I'm talking about here, I have no idea if people normally treat Little Alter Boy this way. This was just me experimenting mostly back at Far Cry Primal because I was trying to add weight and low end to so many small things and it seemed practically impossible. Rub two bricks together and it's going So I want it to sound weighty and big. Enter Little Alter Boy. I think I would probably have um, to what I'd have eight or ten different things that had little altar boy on them and sometimes they'd have two or three instances so you're looking at like 16 to 20 instances of little altar boy to begin with on any track in Far Cry Primal. Basically little altar boy plus the Bricastes is the reason that that score sounds as beefy and heavy as it does. But as you can see with this example you can do all kinds of great stuff with it especially if you end up putting a reverb on the end you can't even really tell what the original sound was. Come on, that's so cool. And I'm constantly doing stuff like that. Automating the mix knob, automating the drive, getting different sounds, kind of getting it to evolve and change over time. And that makes it even more of a, what is that sound kind of thing? It sounds like something was slowed down, you know, and pitch bending and all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's just Little Alter Boy with some reverb. Now, all the examples that I have in this video are going to be available for download as WAV files. I'll have the dry versions. I'll have the Little Alter Boy versions. And I'll even have the Bricasti uh, printed versions in there. So you can download everything and listen to it on good headphones on your own computer. So, $29. Are you kidding me? Go buy it now.